And a very good afternoon to you here in the Vision Theatre at um, the Green Tech. Uh, I think uh, the person who chose the name Vision Theatre well deserves a medal at the end of the day because what we have had here uh, on discussions about the future, really a lot of vision was displayed here and I think um, the, the, the next hour will certainly not disappoint you when you come to um, hear about future developments, about the competitiveness of the industry, but all that linked to the sustainable development goals. I think nowadays, you know, when you, whenever there's any discussion about where the world is heading, central in the discussion are the sustainable development goals and how can the horticultural sector contribute to, to reaching the SDGs, just to abbreviate them, that will be the theme of our discussion this afternoon. And I may invite our first um, participants in the panel on the stage, starting with uh, Annie van der Riet, who is the uh, director of the Dutch Greenhouse Technology Industry Association. Welcome, Annie. Mr. Sjaak Bakker, who is uh, from Wageningen University and is heading the, um, the Greenhouse Complex in Blijswijk and Mr. Ja Bond, the chairman of the top sector horticultural, uh, horticulture and starting materials, also known as the ambassador of horticulture. Welcome to all of you. Um, well, I explained uh, the theme of uh, our discussion and uh, maybe uh, Ja to start with you. Um, horticulture and the SDGs, is that a one-on-one -on -one match? What would be your opinion? Yeah. It's a one-to-one one match. Um, <laughs> of course, the Netherlands subscribed the Sustainable Development Goals. And um, when we're looking at the structure in Holland, we have a, a structure which is perfectly fit to, um, to go to the challenge we have looking at uh, food and sustainability. We call it the, the triple helix. Uh, for us Dutch, is, uh, it's normal. But when we are abroad, uh, it's something to be very proud of. Uh, and it's uh, a very important part of my role as uh, the chairman of uh, the top sector to make the connection between the three, and that is education and investigation, the entrepreneurs and the governance. And those three, these are the triple helix. And we work very strongly together um, and we subscribe the sustainable development goals, but also the ambitions of the Dutch government. And there's a perfect match between what we, what we can do, what the entrepreneurs have to do, because they have to invest. And the Dutch government, they help, they help them. So it's a 50-50 base. And uh, well, that's the reason why it's a very good fit with the sustainable development goals and the role we can play as uh, the Netherlands. Yeah. Because you mentioned the interaction between the government, the private sector and the knowledge institutes. Um, Shaak, for, for you as a in the greenhouse uh, or in the horticultural section of the Wageningen University. Um, the, the cooperation surely uh, is increasingly difficult maybe in the sense that so much fields of expertise are involved in developing a horticultural ecosystem. Yes, and then uh, it helps that within Wageningen University and research you have all kinds of different expertises and disciplines. Uh, within my own business unit, we have people uh, from the cropping systems to high technology, vision, robotics, etc. So it comes all down to integration of these disciplines and working together with uh, the supply industry companies who are pre presenting themselves here. Uh, and I, th I, I think that this cooperation is increasing and, and it's becoming more and more efficient. Uh, and we work with a lot of the different uh, uh, supply industries who are com competing in the market, but in pre-competitive research and development, they work together with us and also uh, with support of the government. So that's a very powerful uh, method in uh, scaling up innovations for the sector. Yeah, because only uh, the members of your association are uh, getting bigger and bigger. So d do they um, at some stage not and visits to do a lot of research themselves, or will they keep looking for the interaction with, for example, Wageningen or the other um, companies in the sector? It's true, our members are getting bigger and bigger, and they do a lot of research by themselves. 
but they also uh, do research together. We have a special foundation for it, uh, Hortivation. Our stand is next to here. And um, uh, together we spend 2 million euros per year for research and development as a sector. So not individual companies, but as a sector, collective. And we do that with the Wageningen University, we do that with TNO, we do that with the TU, TU Delft, and it's pre-competitive. Like Sjaak uh, says, it's pre-competitive. Um, so we make the infrastructure, for instance, uh, the data exchange is very important in our sector, and everyone in the chain wants to exchange the data. And uh, well, we organize that so that they can, they don't have to do that by themselves and they can use the collective infrastructure who organized by the AFAG. Oh, yeah. Because uh, Jaap, your organization is really a central player in, in, uh, in, in bringing together finance for research. The top sector is really uh, the, the, the main part in that. But how do you see uh, the research that uh, Annie also mentioned? How is the top sector uh, steering that uh, research? In, in what, what direction? What is your next ambition in that respect? Well, I, I already mentioned, um, uh, we call it mission-driven uh, uh, um, policy. Uh, so uh, the ambitions of the, of the Dutch government, and they, they cling to, the, to, the, to those development goals. And we work together with entrepreneurs. So we also work together with the sector which Annie represents. And what the government does, um, the, the top sector is our structural innovation money pot. So when they come with new plans, with new innovations, the government will double it. And that's the way to do it. That's the 50-50 balance between what the government wants to invest and what the entrepreneurs want to invest. So you double the money. And that's a big motivation for the entrepreneurs. And it's also very good that you show as a government that you support them in innovation. And these are all innovations with, which will perfectly fit in the ambitions of the government yeah. and also the ambitions of the sustainable development goals. So that's a perfect fit. Yeah. And it works because every year we have the calls and uh, the entrepreneurs, they know, how to f they know the way to find it because every year we have more plans than money. So that's, I think that's, uh, that's good to see. It's a, it's a successful uh, way of working with each other. Yeah. Because, uh, Shaq, f uh, hearing from you uh, as a researcher, what, what, is, what direction is the research going in? I mean, Ani mentioned data, but how is, how is all these new fields of expertise, how is it going to influence that, what is happening in the horticultural sector? <coughs> well, research is uh, basically, um, the companies are leading. So based on uh, their ambitions, together with the ambitions of the government, you try to combine this into uh, common goals and common projects. For instance, on uh, energy saving or water use efficiency. Uh, but if you look to what's going on right now, it's everything has to deal with uh, reducing the labor costs by using artificial intelligence and robotics. It's one of the main lines which you see developing today. Autonomous greenhouses where uh, the control is taken over largely by automatic, automatic systems where you need the, the data platforms which Ani is just referring to. So what you see is there's a scale up of, of companies. So you need more automation to, uh, to run this and to operate this. And I think that uh, what you see uh, going on in the world is that we develop together with the industry production systems uh, which are more efficient and which fit to the local regional conditions. So, and if you, if you look, if you ask me, in what direction is it going, uh, it's, it's even more detailed control on plant level uh, and uh, fully automated. That's basically some of the main lines. Yeah. Because to, to uh, describe this diversity in expertise, Arnie, can you describe a little bit how the membership of your association, how that is different now than it uh, was, uh, let's say, 15 years ago? Oh, it's totally different. Uh, years ago, they were specialized in aluminium, uh, glass or steel, and now it's almost data-driven. 
is data-driven growing, data-driven building. That are the themes for the future. And all the companies are invest in that themes to, uh, to ensure the leading position they can, uh, they can hold on. Hmm. Well, thank you very much. Uh, well, the, the, the central theme of our discussion here is uh, the SDGs. Um, we have our next uh, speaker, that is uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Leo Marcellus. He is head of the chair group of horticulture and um, product physiology at the Wageningen University. And he's going to really uh, dive into these SDGs. But before we give him the floor, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask each, the, the three of you, like, how many SDGs do you think Leo um, thinks horticulture is covering? Yeah. Uh, 27. <laughs> 27. <laughs> Jacques. I think something between six and eight. Between six and eight. Annie. Uh, I hope uh, just between them. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, your, uh, your bets are uh, taken. We'll, uh, we're going to hear the answer from uh, Leo. Thank you very much for uh, your information and your contribution to, this, uh, okay. to the panel. And uh, I'm going to introduce Dr. Leo Marcellus. As I said, he is uh, the head of the chair group, indeed. A round of applause for our uh, contributors. But Dr. Leo Marcellus, the head of the chair group Horticulture and Product Physiology at Wageningen. Um, he grew up at the farm and uh, he has a very strong background in uh, plant physiology, as I said. But he does a lot of computer modeling, crop monitoring. Um, very happy that he could uh, take time out of his busy schedule to um, enlighten us. Mr. Marcellus, the floor is yours. Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, is there my presentation also somewhere? Do I just... The, the, uh, the green uh, button and then it starts... Uh... No. Toch? Yes. Nee, deed niet groter. Ja, die, die had ik al gedaan. Menno? Oké. Sustainable Development Goals, we're talking about it, but then in the end I also would like to look a little bit at the numbers. And it is just very important that as a sector we work on sustainability. We see it now at this moment, what is happening with the nitrogen in the animal farming. Uh, now the sector is maybe not anymore in the lead, so we should stay in the lead. And high-tech greenhouses are doing it very well. And I will show in my presentation how well we are doing. But also, there are still some attention points, and we have to address them. Um, and now it is not yet coming, yeah, so um, I think, I hope, it can, I hope you can solve it very rapidly. But this, and, and I think what we should do as a sector, we should look on how good are we, where can we improve, and where should we improve, and take that serious. Because that will give us a competitive advantage, but then also we should be good and then also tell it. Tell it in a transparent way, be open where we need to improve and tell it to everybody. And communicate and discuss with the whole society. Obviously, is there a chance that it will come or? Good. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, yeah. We can also do it. Uh, we can also do it. Uh, Menno, can you hear me? Menno, because otherwise we can do it interview style. Yeah. Also, I can ask you the question also, and you can uh, maybe yeah. repeat it, uh, like um, the contribution of horticulture, no, no, I know, he's going to answer, but the contribution of um, horticulture to SDGs, how does yeah. that, the contribution of that horticulture can make to the SDGs, when you look at the Netherlands, how would it be different from contribution to the SDGs in, say, any other country, let's say, yeah. South Asia. Yeah, so what I have in my presentation is that there are a number of sustainable development goals, SDGs. And what we did do first, we, we looked at what sustainable development goals are relevant for the horticultural sector. So there are a large number of them, but not all where we play 
a row. Uh, if I say the numbers by heart, I think there are about, oh, now I may mix up. I think we have about 14 sustainable development goals which are relevant. And then we checked on how good are we on, or, well, with each sustainable development goal, there are also criteria. They are defined. And we looked also which criteria are relevant and then checked how good are we. Well, and then there are a number of things with respect to hunger in the world. Hunger in the world, but we also have to be honest, uh, we focused in this study on tomato and hunger in the world is in the end about many type of crops. And I think greenhouses is in particular for fresh food, which is relevant. But then still also there it holds with hunger, it is how much land do we use. Greenhouse what I call you, a huge production, tomato, to well, there are growers, 100 kilograms per square meter per year. You don't need much land area. Well then, and that's I think very important for sustainability. The question is then, what do we do with that land? Give it back to nature or do we build houses? If we give it back to nature, then we contribute to biodiversity. So that's one of the benefits of where greenhouse can do. We can also highlight that more. It's also in greenhouses where we can have a year round production. Uh, you can debate, do we need year-round tomatoes? Yes, well, people want year-round food and also tomatoes and other fresh vegetables. So there are a few examples on where greenhouses have a very high score. Water use. Do you know how many liters of water are needed for one kilogram of tomato, let's say, in the Mediterranean area, when you grow it outside? Any idea? Well, if you do it very good, maybe you can do it with 60 liters of water. If you look now to the Dutch growers in the Netherlands in the greenhouse, they use only 15 to 17 liters of water. Water use and water scarcity, water pollution worldwide is a big issue. So that's another uh, example of where greenhouses score very good on sustainable development goals. There's also one aspect where greenhouses are not doing it so well, these high-tech greenhouses in the Netherlands or in temperate zones, and that's energy. And energy at this moment is even getting more important. Now prices go high up that we see, hey, this dependency on countries like Russia, uh, that's problematic. So there is no doubt we need to go to completely abandon fossil fuels. A big challenge, a big challenge now for many reasons and also for the reason of sustainability. There is no way back. We should step forward and we need to invest in that. It's maybe not easy, but it is doable. Um, well, there were, there were several others yes. like SDG 9, industry innovation. Yeah, so it is also about innovation. How new is the sector? What type of technology do pop up? Well, you see it here at the fair. What is popping up? And see what it was five years ago and the difference now. Well, if I now look around, I see a lot of LEDs. Uh, five years ago, they were also there, but much less. I see vertical farming coming up a lot. They were also much less five years ago. Just a few of those examples. Or what Jacques Bakker, I think, mentioned, the autonomous production systems. We are going towards autonomous control of the whole production system. That will increase the effectivity of the production system. It also helps with the reduced labor use. And because there was another one, and I, I, I did look at your presentation, which is, I guess is a good thing that, that we have the technical hiccup, but I was intrigued that you also listed SDG 14. Do you know which one is 14? It's not commonly found in horticulture. You know. Yeah, the, I, sorry, I don't life, know the numbers by heart. No, no. <laughs> life below water. Yes, life below water. Please explain. Life below water. Well, you can imagine what that life is. There, 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 there are fishes and, all, uh, uh, and algae and all, all those things. A large part of the world is with water. Also, that life we need to protect. And often it is ruined by the nitrates, by the phosphates, sorry, phosphates, by pesticides coming in general from agriculture. Now we have to take, if we go to a high-tech greenhouse where we grow 
on a substrate, or maybe even without a substrate, but where we have this continu continuous recirculation. The technology is just there, it is available, it's commonly applied in the high-tech greenhouses in Netherlands and other countries. And that's extremely important that then the nitrates and the phosphates are continuously reused, and, well, I would say pesticides we should anyhow not use, but if they are used, then they should definitely not go with water towards the water. So there is also where we contribute to the life below water. Yeah, okay, that's point taken because, ladies and gentlemen, the correct answer to the SDG question uh, asked earlier is, in his presentation, it was eight. Eight. And I think uh, Professor Marcellus illustrated the importance of energy, but I would, you mentioned that um, the sector is not doing that well maybe on the energy um, uh, level, but is not the, all these high prices, uh, um, say, taking initiatives on the entrepreneurship of the sector so that we will have energy alternatives very soon? Uh, absolutely. What you, well, I, throughout the years, I'm already for many years in research and we have had not so extreme as it is now, but we have had periods with higher prices and then you see the innovations more and more being implemented. So I think this will now give a boost to implementing and uh, technologies, further developing technologies. The only worry that they have is that the sector needs to uh, handle very quickly, very rapidly, coming at high cost. So I hope that the sector gets a little bit time to adapt to that. But yes, this will get quicker and quicker. And I think then overall, there will be some tough years for these investing and whether it's all economically feasible in the long term, I think the sector will get better yeah. from this. And because there is, there would anyhow be not a way back. Yeah. And I, I, I like what you say, the sector will get better. And I'm sure it will ask uh, a lot of uh, cooperation between various sectors of the economy because, of course, I'm, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a professor at Wageningen, but um, I would, the, the one that was not listed in your presentation was actually SDG 17. You know which one is 17? Partnerships. And I think walking through partnerships, uh, we had the UIE this, uh, this morning on stage in the United States. And there was a lot of talk about partnerships between uh, companies on both sides of the aisle, if you permit so uh, to speak. So may I recommend to uh, add 17 to the that's a good. That's a good suggestion. Uh, and indeed, we see, well, we see here the international environment also here at this uh, fair. We see a lot of cooperation within the Netherlands and with all the companies. And if I look also at my own agenda, I have uh, every week, I have a few early meetings, let's say, with companies in the East, and I have every uh, end of the afternoon some meetings with people in the, let's say, in, in the Americas. So that's probably yeah. also an, uh, an example of how well we are connected throughout the world. Yeah. And I would even um, be as, uh, go as far as to say that you can raise the number of SDGs to 10, because you mentioned energy and we have to do better there. Uh, and a lot of entrepreneurship uh, and innovation is being put to the test here. But um, SDG 8, decent work, is something that might not always be well established in the greenhouse, but when you look at all the robotics that is coming our way, I think maybe decent work Absolutely. can be added, bringing it a total to nine, yeah, uh, 10, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe yeah. nice to say about this work is also, if we look 15 years ago, agriculture, horticulture had a quite a bad image with the work. Still, we can do better, but we see a lot of improvement. And I also see it at the students coming to our university, where 15 years ago we had few students. Now it is booming that everybody say, hey, this, it relates to innovation. They come here because it's an innovative sector, high tech, and indeed nice work. Um, and robotization, automation has also taken away in particular the, the, let's say, the less nice work. Yeah. Well, uh, Professor Marcellus, uh, thank you very much for uh, your contribution. And we're truly sorry that your presentation uh, was not uh, brought to the screen, but I think we, uh, we got the message across. Um, so uh, for the number of SDGs, the answer eight is uh, okay, but when you make it to 10, it's even better. Yeah. So thank you very much. We'll see you later in the, in the, in the panel and it's just, uh, without any presentation, so that should be fine. Um, 
ladies and gentlemen, because um, sustainability is not something that is uh, um, is connected to the chain. And we, we have a we'll have a panel that will illustrate how sustainability is actually working in the chain. And we'll we'll have a, from the retail to the back to the greenhouse. Um, we'll have a, a panel discussion uh, how we can meet demand, how sustainable we already are, and what techniques are being used to improve the, um, the performance of the sector. We have uh, chairs for our panelists, and uh, I might call them to the stage, uh, please. We have uh, Jeroen Westrate, who works for the Fresh Produce Center. Um, we have with us Edward Verbakel, uh, CEO of the VB Group and co-founder of Atrium Energy. There ready we go. Gonneke Gerkema, who works for uh, Grodon. And Bart van Meurs, who is the uh, Chief Innovation Officer of Coppertress, or Innovation Manager. Please take a, take a seat and um, we'll get starting. Look, he. Nog eentje, hè? Um, I think uh, two. Yeah, maybe it's better. Then there's a schoolmeister behind. Um, well, thank you very much for, um, for uh, joining us on stage uh, here today. Maybe just as an introduction, uh, I'll start with you, Jeroen. Did you have an opportunity to look at uh, the green tech already this morning? Yeah, but just what is your What is your first impression? Yeah, a lot of uh, companies are here and it's great to see all the innovation. And um, yeah, it's a nice... Uh, Edward? Yeah, not only uh, companies, but also people. I, uh, I think particularly it's good that we have uh, a fair uh, like this again. It's good to catch up with the people you already know and meet uh, the people that you don't know. That's what the purpose is of uh, Green Tech. Yeah, yeah. Gonneke, your impression? Yeah, I think it's very positive. I'm just super happy that after all these COVID times that we can have this again, right? Be yeah. all together, meet people face to face. Yeah. Yeah, Bart? Um, uh, apologies for my uh, voice, but uh, yeah, we are happy to have this again. We've missed it. Yeah. And it's uh, good to see all those faces without a screen in between yeah, of it. Exactly. So you had, you had the party already yesterday? Uh, yeah. uh, well, yes. I, I hope yeah. it was so, but it was not uh, the case. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. And we discussed, um, we discussed the SDGs and, and innovation and sustainability. But maybe, Jeroen, uh, first question to you, like, um, it all ends in the retail. It all ends with the consumer. And how is the how is our consumers appreciating all the sustainability that uh, that the sector is, is is doing? Is it is it bringing the value that it um, that it uh, should be getting? Yeah, I definitely think uh, that our horticultural sector is providing nutritious food. If we are talking about sustainability uh, or fruit and vegetables. Um, and what we try uh, in our sector is to measure sustainability, so to show how sustainable we are. And we are doing that with life cycle assessment. And life cycle assessment is a method to quantify sustainability along the value chain. <coughs> um, so we start at uh, yeah, the cultivation phase up to the retail and we look in every stage what are the inputs. So we are not only looking to carbon, but also to fertilizers, uh, pesticides, for example. And in the end, we hope to give an integral view of what sustainability is and how sustainable we already are. But there's nothing uh, that communicates to the consumer directly uh, so far in the making. Um, yes, there are many initiatives uh, in the making, for example, eco-label um, in fruit and vegetables at least. Uh, the eco-label is there, but also several certification schemes. So there are labels in the making. Ah. And maybe uh, Edward, uh, to turn to you, uh, I think one of the elements in the SDG um, list that was um, met with some I want to say criticism, but energy was a, a thing where we had to improve the performance. You are very active when it comes to theo geothermal projects. Yes. What do you think is the future of that technology? Uh, with the current energy prices, I think uh, geothermal heat uh, as a sustainable source has much more promising facts than uh, we, we have uh, seen before. So basically, the, the, the energy prices are driving us towards becoming more sustainable. It's, it's basically not economic to grow under such circumstances. We look to the, to the goals. Our company is, is focusing more on number seven and number nine. So that be more energy efficient, but also providing infrastructures 
uh, to, uh, to actually reach that, so to bring the infrastructures to the greenhouses and also look where we can combine the multiple use of greenhouse needs as well as industrial needs and see if we can use other waste uh, that, that, that industries consider waste as an asset for greenhouses. Yeah. Um, for you, um, for your company Grodan, when it comes to the SDGs, which one is your, where, where are you really targeting your efforts? Um, mostly on uh, a few, right? Life on land, eh? because we uh, provide substrates, so you can grow out of soil. Eh? So that for us is very important. And also on the water and the uh, less use of crop protection, because you have a closed environment, because you have protected and you have an inert substrate. Yeah, you need to, you can give precisely what the plant needs, right? So you can be very exact. And because of that, you are more sustainable, more environmentally friendly because you use less water, less crop protection, and you get more yield. Yeah, yeah Bart, um, turning to you, uh, um, we know your company is very much also driven by health. Yes, uh, it is. You yes. say we are the, um, the um, we, have, um, we are producing medicines, not, but you, you, healthy people, healthy foods are, are very well connected. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> how is the message getting across that what you bring is actually good for people now i, I think uh, that it's um, um what helps us is that we are supplying the professional market so we, we have the chef as an ambassador for our product uh, instead of uh, trying to convince the consumer we inspire the chefs to share the message and that gives a an exponential effect so in our professional market that that message is coming through very good but we hope we can uh, can uh, inspire uh, the sector as a whole to be, to be more proud and to share more about the uh, healthy effects of our great products we are producing. producing. Um, because when you, when you talk about, we talk about the market uh, and, and about the consumer appreciation of the SDGs. Um, I'm, I'm sure when you get up um, every morning and you go to your work, it's not that you think of how can we realize the SDGs, but how is the the attention for SDGs, how is that translating into your, um, the philosophy of your company? I mean to say, is, how, is, um, um, how does it drive your, your, your innovation and, 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 and do you see the, um, the urgency of complying with all these demands from the market, either consumers or citizens? Maybe we start with you, uh, Jeroen. Yeah, I work for a branch organization, so I cannot talk for a company, but I can talk for a sector. And what I think is we all have in common that we uh, should become more sustainable in the end. And there are targets coming from either the market, from retailers confirming their self to targets like uh, science-based targets initiative, or on the other hand, you have also legislation coming from the Green Deal, for example. There you have the targets, and I think that's also related to the SDGs that are also targets. And you try, or at least we try with life cycle assessment to identify the hotspots along our sector and what teams, what environmental teams are a hot topic in our sector and to focus on that uh, to become more sustainable. <coughs> Um, I think from a business perspective, <coughs> which is sometimes leading, it's always easy to look at the economics. But from another angle, we also have responsibility to future generations, to, to our kids and, and, and potential grandchildren and whatsoever. So it's looking more what do we offer as an industry and can we really explain our current model uh, to be sustainable for a long term. Of course, we are not there yet, but I think there's many ways that we can improve ourselves. We should be open and reflect to one another to see what we can do better to, 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 to actually have a better position in, in the, the near future. That's important for our industry, but also important for ourselves. And next to that is also uh, a consideration for new employees to seek new employment ship on, on what message do you send out. And we see that new generations, the, 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 the young talent, is not only attracted to a, a good wage, but also to a story that a company uh, adopts. And that's what we also value to attract people to also have a future purpose for our own business. 
Yeah, it's an interesting angle. Yeah, yeah. yeah Ronneke, for you? Yeah, so we approach it from uh, two uh, perspectives, actually. Yeah? So one is indeed uh, the high-tech greenhouses, right? So what can we do more for that industry sector to make it more green? And the other angle is, of course, grow than itself. So what can we do to make our products much greener and also our production processes much greener? And I agree with you, actually, what we also see is because we have such a clear strategy on both sides that that really helps with uh, new employees. They are very much attracted to those kind of stories. And it is important. Eh? I mean, I have kids. I, most of us maybe have kids. <laughs> I want them to also have a planet, right? Uh, so, but for growth, then it's, it's both uh, the industry. Eh? So how can we make the industry even more sustainable than it is today? And the other side is how can we make our products and our production processes more green? better than today and in both we invest quite yeah. a bit of time and energy yeah oh, well of course uh, i'm not driving uh, uh, in the morning to the company and uh, thinking i'm gonna i'm gonna solve the uh, fill in the sdgs but we have a large intrinsic motivation to uh, to do to do good for the world but the sdgs give uh, give us a guideline to uh, to do that in a more structural uh, uh, science target based way uh, to, to, to do good, to canalize your efforts. And we really have based our long-term uh, goals on some subjects from the SDGs. Yeah, interesting. Because, there's one because in the Netherlands we talk a lot about SDGs and the sustainability, but what I was wondering is how do international markets, how do international partnerships um, uh, contribute to your drive? Is it uh, simply just happening in the Netherlands or do you notice uh, that this, this drive is worldwide in all the markets that you operate in. Maybe, maybe to break the routine, we start with you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, yes, uh, I think we have a, uh, a market that is very aware of what's happening. If you were talking to Michelin star chefs or good chefs in general, they are, they are thinking about the, the, the background of the product, the, the, the footprint. Is it, is it done in a proper way? And if you can quantify that, and you, if you can prove that, then you have something. So the request is there and still there are dilem dilemmas because we're producing in the Netherlands uh, 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 and it's transported. And of course we calculate, we want to go to zero, but as we don't have it all in our hands. At some point, uh, our product goes in a plane and goes to Dubai. Is that, is that a good way of doing? Or do we, do we have to do it another way around? Do we have to start our own branch there? or don't, do, don't have to sell it there. That's, that, those are dilemmas we have to think about. And that's what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think a lot of uh, markets are currently thinking about food security, right? Uh, especially, and you see that very strongly in, uh, in the United States. You see it also strongly in the United Arab Emirates. More and more countries want to be uh, provide also for their own food in, 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 and cultivate that in a good way. And I think that's where a lot of the interest out of the uh, high-tech greenhouse is also coming from, uh, because they recognize that it's a very environmentally friendly way to uh, very effectively uh, grow quite a bit of healthy food, right? So I do, I'm not sure whether the motivation is always sustainability, but I definitely think it also plays a role in other markets. I do feel sometimes that Europe is leading there compared to some other markets. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my take on it is that our domestic market is still very relevant, but it reaches a, st a state of maturity. So we see that, that companies are well organized, uh, optimized to, to the highest levels. The future is definitely abroad. So we see uh, more demand for local for local. Yeah. I, I also see that, that knowledge is the key that which we can still distinguish ourselves. We can manufacture abroad. We can also partner abroad to make uh, greenhouse infrastructures. Uh, and, and, and there's always the, the two keys on the footprints. That's the energy and the water footprint by which we stand out. So I think while we can still maintain that level of knowledge, we can really be seen as an industry. The fact that we are here in Amsterdam, uh, it's a very good uh, uh, starting point to express and show what we have as an industry, but it's definitely meant for the rest of the world and not only for ourselves. Yeah. Sharing is knowing, so interaction is required to, to, to also for us to get better. And But with the local for local, you think you are, um, that's definitely of a higher importance than the other um, uh, elements of it, it doesn't bringing make technology. sense to, to ship food over thousands of miles in my opinion i think with 
the level of knowledge, we should be more creative than that and reduce food miles. That is longer shelf life, fr fresher product, but also uh, abilities to share knowledge abroad so that people can uh, feed themselves rather than be dependent on other countries. And that's also a bit of a geopolitical discussion that you do not want to run into import restrictions that we've seen in, in the very, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was not too long ago that we were faced by that. Uh, we, we need to be able to produce everywhere in the world, but then against an economic footprint. So you always should explain what does it cost to produce and can we still explain that? Then I f feel that we can always win from anything that happens outside. And then on the inside, you know, it's in our interest to, to do it on a high tech level. Yeah. Less hands, less energy, less water. Interesting. We'll, we'll come back to that. Maybe Jeroen also. From yeah, I think the attention for sustainability is global. Um, so I think also for producers or actors across the value chain, sustainability is becoming more imperative. So also environmental footprinting, for example, is becoming a hot topic. And also maybe reacting to your um, opinion about local for local, I think um, it's, it's one sustainability stream, but on the other hand, we see also with environmental footprints and life cycle assessment, if you include multiple environmental teams, so not only carbon, but also water, pesticides, um, nutrients, it's not always local for local what is the best. And um, sometimes the production does definitely outweigh um, the impact of the transport if you ship yeah. um, it if you do it by ship, if you fly your products, it's... Local can also be defined in, in hundreds of miles, but thousands is, I think, a little bit uh, uh, not easy to explain. But that's uh, opinions. Yeah, it, it, it depends uh, if it is an opinion. If you compare, if we, in the Netherlands, we grow a lot of food, and also um, in South America, we grow mangoes, avocados. Um, and I think if we have a more plant-based diet, it, it is definitely become more sustainable. This, so I think you um, need not only to focus on local for local as the ideal yeah. solution. <laughs> you want to react to that? Yes, I think it's good from to, to take a look from both perspectives. Um, I think we have uh, to consider a consumer that's becoming more demanding. It does, does not take seasonality into, into consideration anymore. We want a strawberry all, during yeah, all of the year or a grape or another type of a seasonal fruit so the consumer will determine what will happen and i think this, the consumer will closely monitor what it does it take to grow so they right now a tomato does not talk but if we really uh, are getting a little bit far i have one of my american clients which they say i know more about my uber driver than about the tomato that i buy and that tomato doesn't talk. Is it, is it two weeks old? Is it, is, is, it, is it coming from Mexico? Who is the seed producer? What was the water footprint? I think slowly the consumer will start to demand to know more about what he's eating. What is on my plate? Where does it come from? And then the local for local, whether it's 100 or 1,000 miles, will come into effect because that is related to energy, freshness. Uh, so I, I'm not saying that uh, one is right or the other, but I think there's definitely a couple of elements in there that the consumer will at the end determine what will happen. And, maybe and we you are also a, a consumer and I'm also a consumer and that's the yep. other hat that we sometimes yeah. wear. But maybe you should bring in uh, uh, Professor Mercedes. Maybe I'm taking your chair, but you, you sit here and mm -hmm. you, no, you can reflect uh, on what you've heard. And <laughs> in particular, I'm interested by the role of the consumer because you know we have a lot of policies in the ministry and we're always driving for sustainability. In the end, we have to face that the consumer is not willing to pay for all this. Yeah, uh, well, I think we should have much more interaction with consumers, just in general, or a consumer, the whole society. Um, indeed, if, uh, if you are in a shop and you have a very cheap tomato and you have the one more expensive, then often the consumer may buy, or there are groups of consumers which buy the cheaper one. But we have to be very clear in communicating. Also in the shops, and there's also yep. a role for everybody, we as a sector, but also the whole retail in making clear what was mentioned there. I think you said it was this transparency. If you're in the shop, where does it come from? What is the quality? What is the sustainability? We are not very clear on that. We should make that very more explicit. And you see it in the whole society that is more and more awareness 
of sustainability. And in particular, I see also in the younger generations, it's even much more than in the older generations. Yep. They do not accept anymore that we do if we are not sustainable. So I think there's a larger and larger group coming also willing to pay for it. And let's be fair, in the Netherlands indeed, everything is so cheap with the food. Now we are talking about that the prices go up, but please check what fraction of our total costs are on food compared to, it's, it's just a small fraction. And yes, often we go for the cheapest, but here there is communication, making clear that yes, overall, if you want to sustain our world, we have to invest in it. And yes, it will cost for everybody a little bit, but if you all realize that, I think the majority of the consumers we can convince. But there are different groups of consumers and there will stay different groups who, who have different perceptions. Well, I think that's one for you to comment on, uh, Jeroen. Like, uh, you're closest to the consumer. Well, Bart is close to his chefs, but the average consumer is more like yeah, closest I, to you. I think there is definitely a role to play for commun communication towards the consumer. Um, I only think communicating about sustainability to the consumer is really difficult because sustainability, at least environmental sustainability, contains a lot of topics. So there should be a clear and um, yeah, clear methodology on how to communicate with the consumer in, for example, a label or something like that. Because, uh, for example, you, Gonneke, and, and, and Edward, you were in the uh in, on the way to the consumer, you're, you're, you're uh, delivering the inputs or the, yeah. the production uh, facilities? Our clients are the investors and the growers. So we provide in the greenhouse solution to grow. And the grower is supposed to market this product directly or indirectly through, through, to the chain to, towards the consumer. So indirectly, we are depending on where it's happening. And then climate change uh, starts to become a role. So where climate change has an impact on outdoor or, or, or let's say medium low tech growing high-tech uh, growth solutions have opportunities to, to, to become more successful. But from that uh, consumer perspective, I think we also have the limitation here in Holland that we are sometimes too modest. We, we know a lot, we only say it to each other, and we have a hard time explaining it like the, the Americans can do in a very uh, easy uh, yeah. uh, and, and, and appealing way. So we, we, we know that it's good, but we're sometimes a little bit too shy to share that. And, and that's also part of the limitation why it's not being recognized that what we do is good. So perhaps in the education of the new generations, we should put a little bit more attention on how to communicate a good story as we in the current generations have some limitations of really sending that message. And then the Dutch are more known for the waterworks and everything that we <laughs> do with protecting yeah. the sea in water and not so much about how can we grow yeah. Uh, vegetables with <coughs> less water. That, that's, I think, a shortage of our industry, mm. first of all, but also government, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, other organizations who can help us. We should tell a little bit more positive about it. Yeah, I think you definitely, um, your panel members are agreeing because I see you all nodding. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, I think, and, and I, I agree with you that in, United, of in, in Canada and the United States, you see more examples of that because there a lot of growers have more direct contracts with the supermarkets, yeah. right? And we've actually, as a supplier to those growers, have been involved in uh, defining that marketing message in the supermarket for the consumers on why this particular tomato or pepper is actually better than some of the other ones. So there, because there's much closer relationships, we even as a supplier were pulled into that conversation. And that really helps because I agree, uh, consumers don't know. Eh? We, have, uh, we have an organic label and that's where it stops. Eh? We don't have climate safe type label. We don't have, well, we have somewhat transparency. I think you can see the, the country where the tomato or the blueberry is coming from, but that's where it stops. Eh? You, I think we can, yeah, there should be a lot more transparency on all these things. And also yeah. nutritional facts, why not, right? On when it was harvested, because that also tells you something about the nutritional value. And I think that will help, that will educate the consumer. Because that should all be technically well possible, uh, Leo, no? Yep. Yes. To, to, to bring the consumer all that information. Yep. Yes, absolutely. And I really think that there's a need, and, and indeed that is how to communicate it, make it indeed simple, yep. but, and then do it very simple, but also for some who want to go deeper, uh, there are also technology now to have really with different levels of detail to make that available. And make, make that communication, that sharing part of your identity. 
Yeah. It, 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 so it's not only about, it, it, of course, it's business. It is about business success, but it's also about sharing. We have a clear target. We want 10,000 people per year on the company. Are those all chefs? No. Of course, we want chefs to buy our products, but it, it starts with school kids tasting uh, vegetables for the first time yeah. and ends up with people from horticulture around the world sharing what we do here in Holland. And just like Edward said, uh, be, mo be more proud of what, we, what our impact can be on healthy foods and what our achievements are on reducing the impact of water, like you said, energy, etc. Yeah. But share it, open your doors. And that's, in our case, it is really part of identity. We, we, we bring it to the stage and we, we hope it, uh, it does follow. Yeah, you want to react to that, uh, Leon? Yeah, I fully agree on that, but I also would like to say that we should be always fair, that we honest. And if yeah. on yeah. those aspects yeah, that we are yeah. not good, we should also be yeah, talented. True, true. And not just say everything is good if it is not. No, be fair true. on it, because that's in the long run. Because if we just tell a nice story, which is not true, true. that will go good for maybe one or two years. But then you end up in the. Th no, then no nobody will believe you anymore. Like so greenwashing, that's greenwashing makes no sense. No. Yeah. But you're, you're all doing a, a great job. I know nationally, yeah, your company. I know mm. I've visited many times with mm. uh, with the delegations and press people. But how can we communicate better to the, our foreign partners about the innovation or about the standards in the Netherlands? You you mentioned it, Edward. But where uh, who who should who should take the lead in that? The government. Always start by yourself. Eh? It's, uh, <laughs> I think that it's, yeah, you, you, by yourself, you have yeah. to start yeah. yourself and then try to unite. Uh, I think this is an example of unification. Yeah. We have uh, uh, industry groups like uh, AVA, what Ani represents. Yeah. That's more from a technical perspective. I think what, what you do represents something. We have the, the GROW organizations. I think our government could, of course, be a little bit more helpful, but you cannot always point to the government when it doesn't work because the government indirectly are we, we they've been selected and elected by us. So it's, it's a little bit of a difficult uh, discussion. I think you should never wait for the government to create your success. You should do that yourself and, and, and uh, be creative and, 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 and talk to each other and, and share and, and use social media as well to, to send messages. There's, uh, there's many ways to, to do it. I think uh, we, we should uh, look at ourselves first, in my opinion. Yeah, and I think actually the study that was conducted by, uh, by Leo Marcelles eh, on the UN SDGs, I think that's a very nice storybook actually for us to start spreading the news. And indeed, eh, the good side, but also the side that we still need to work on for the high-tech greenhouses. And, and we should all organize ourselves uh, better, I guess, in terms of the sa sharing the same story, because stories you have to repeat minimally six times, right, for people to be able to repeat it. Yeah, and then just do it. But I think we do a lot of it. Eh? There are there are already a lot of working groups and uh, things that work together and also like AVAG and DGG. But I don't think we're there yet. And I think we really need to keep on investing in sharing that story. Yeah. Well, I think also this exhibition is a good example, like the meetings we have had here this morning in the Vision Theater with the United Arab Emirates and the United States and, and others to come. Um, at least we're trying to partner with all these imp yeah. important countries. So we do our best. Um, what do you think the audience sh should take away from this session? Uh, maybe we start with you, uh, Leo. So talk about sustainability, act on it, communicate and further improve it. That's a very concise yeah, one. There was some sports brand that uh, once said, uh, just do it, do it, make sure it's, it's correct, share it, share it, share it with the world. Yeah, high-tech greenhouses, eh, they score really well on seven of the eight sustainability goals, right? So let's fix number eight, or and we can, because they're also very adoptive to innovation, so let's just do it indeed. I think at this moment, sustainability is not yet our primary driver, but we should use sustainability to guide us and then uh, eventually, uh, absorb, uh, let's say, embrace it. And, and, and make each other aware and tell to each other that it's, that it's very relevant to move forward. Yeah, I like that one. Yeah. I would say if you want to become more sustainable, start measuring your environmental footprint to get an insight in how sustainable you already are, but also to get an insight in where you can improve. Um, that's yeah. Yeah, because sometimes, when, and that's also a start of my wrapping up, I think the horticulture sector is sometimes still underestimated. Yeah. 
if you look at the contribution it makes to less chemicals, less water use, uh, more efficient energy, short supply chains, healthy products, um, decent labor, you can, you can make an endless list. I think with uh, Professor Marcinus we established that we are targeting eight plus two SDGs. Uh, not too many sectors of the economy managed to reach that, uh, that target. Also, um, the horticultural sector is one of the most competitive sectors of our economy. I think it was also well displayed in, the, in, this, in this panel. Uh, I think we, you know, from the retail all the way to the, well, to the growing and the, the, the energy and the, the, um, the work of uh, Verba, Mr. Verbakel, um, the, we are doing a good job which we could even do better. I very much like the focus, uh, the emphasis on transparency, uh, be good and also tell it. Um, that's what green uh, tech is doing or enable us, enabling us to do. Uh, thank you for being here. I hope uh, you found it an inspiring event. And uh, if not, there is the rest of Green Tech to enjoy to get your <laughs> ideas and inspiration. Thank you very much for um, the organizers of bringing this session together. And um, a round of applause for our speakers, please. Thank you.